Okay. Hi, I'm Siobhan Sarna, founder of SIBO SOS and summit creator and producer and author. My book's floating around here, Healing SIBO. And I'm here with Kieran Krishnan, who is a microbiologist, a microbiome biologist, and the co-founder of Microbiome Labs. We're talking today about the mucosal lining of the gut. And for those of you who saw my email that was talking about how it's just really a continuation of the oral tissue all the way down. And if you've ever, you know, brushed your teeth really hard and there was some blood, that's not normal, by the way, it's average, it happens, but it's not truly, it's, it's a sign that something needs to be addressed in that mucosal microbiome. Um, and it's uh, part of the territory of the body, Kieran, that I think we talk about when we talk about leaky gut and the tight junctures and, you know, the spaces and the leaking of food particles that can happen in the body to create an autoimmune. And yet there's more to it than that. And also good news before I drop everyone here, while we're all talking about how late it is in the year and we're freaking out a little bit, there are answers and there is hope. And it's good to have you here, Kieran. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Actually, let me grab a schematic that I have over there. Oh, we love schematics. Okay. Yeah, they're fun. Um, okay. And yes, he's a Leo. And yes, he knows he has a lion behind his head and it makes him look like <laughs> he does know that's, that. That's my friend. Um, if you have any questions, pop them into the Q&A box and any chat, if you could cease and desist, not that you're doing it right now, um, just during the chat um, to literally just use that for uh, technical issues. I'd appreciate it. Okay, Karen, let's see a schematic. Yes, so I'll use this to talk through the mucosal lining and, and, the, and the problems associated okay. with it, right? Um, so keep in mind here that, um, oh, it's over here. Um, so the mucosal lining sits up on top of the intestinal epithelium. So these cells here are the intestinal epithelium. You can see, you know, denoted by a number of different colors and so on. And the different colors are the different types of cells in the intestinal epithelium. So the intestinal epithelium, has numerous different cells in it. A lot of them are immune cells, right? So the intestinal epithelium is thought of as a kind of a bona fide immune system, if you will. There are cells like L cells, M cells, panlet cells, and, and I'll explain why there's so many immune cells in the intestinal epithelium, but but just think of this lining. Is that uh, the purpley part that you're showing? Purpley part, yep. This, and then the little these cells here standing next to each other. They're okay. basically a single layer of cells standing shoulder to shoulder. This is the last barrier between the inside of the body and the outside of the body, right? So when something goes into your digestive tract, you swallow it. We think of it in many ways as, our, oh, it's inside the body. It's actually not yet. So the digestive tract is a tube that's open on both ends. So it's actually still considered the outside of the body. When things go past this layer of cells, this last layer of cells, down here is the circulation, right? That's when it's truly inside the body. So that's the big difference. Now, this mucosal barrier here, I'm trying to position it properly. This mucosal barrier here is a critical part of maintaining a barrier to, to in, discourage and control things that may easily pass through this last layer of cells and then enter into circulation, right? So that's a very critical juncture of health. Now, when you look at the mucosal layer, when you look at the schematic, there's two different structures here. There's this darker blue structure and then the very light blue structure. Now, the darker blue structure is what we call the mucin two layer. And as you can see, there's very few microbes that are in this section. In fact, no microbes in this section. This top layer, mucin one, is where all the microbes exist. This bottom layer is a little thicker. It's kind of like a jello-like layer, um, and it acts as the final barrier. This mucin one layer is a little bit more softer, a little more, more liquid, and that's where all of the microbes tend to harmonize and exist in the gut microbiome. So this is what uh, the homeostatic structure looks like. You need to have these distinct layers, and then you need to have the intestinal epithelium, all with the cells tight next to each other, shoulder to shoulder, right? This entire structure is what we refer to as the ground zero of most health disorders, right? When this structure becomes compromised, that's when you start to see the formation of chronic illness, Right? And that's why it's the ground zero of most health disorders. I do a whole 
two hour lecture to, to doctors and healthcare practitioners going through the pathology of how when this system breaks down and starts to look more like this, mm-hmm. that becomes the pathway to developing chronic illness, right? So what's happening over here is basically part of this mucin two layer, the darker blue layer has been eaten away. And which means that this mucin one layer basically translocates or bleeds into the region very close to the intestinal epithelial layer, right? When that happens, <clears throat> it brings with it all of these microbes that are up in this top layer. It brings all of these microbes down very close to the intestinal epithelium. There is a proximity detector, if you will, within the intestinal epithelium that can detect that these microbes, many of them are commensal and they're just fine. They're not toxic microbes or anything, but they are still microbes, can detect when these microbes have gotten too close to this layer, right? This mucin two layer maintains that barrier, maintains that space, what I call the demilitarized zone, right? So if there is this space that exists, then the microbes and the immune system talk all the time and they work in a very friendly, cooperative manner. The moment this barrier uh, becomes um, disengaged or disrupted and this layer bleeds into this layer, these microbes all come too close to the intestinal epithelium. That's the trigger for all the immune cells in the intestinal epithelium to start recruiting innate immune actors to try to protect this area, right? Now, the reason why this is so sensitive is because keep in mind, the last barrier of the body is just one cell layer thick, right? And if this cell layer becomes compromised and you get a flood of microbes through, the body thinks that you're undergoing sepsis. And sepsis is a very dangerous thing. You can go from walking around being totally fine within 48 hours being on death's doorstep, right? So all of this immune overreaction is to protect the body from sepsis, right? So breaking down of this mucin two layer, this mucosal layer, the second mucosal layer called mucin two, and the allowance of translocation of the mucin one layer and all the microbes too close to the intestinal epithelium is what will trigger a massive inflammatory response in this area. So innate immune cells get recruited to this area. They come in, they start carpet bombing things in this area to try to kill microbes. But as they do that, they also carpet bomb and destroy the intestinal epithelium. So then the cells actually get damaged and start to disintegrate. And that leaves massive gaps in this area, right? So that process is really what dysbiosis is. So when we talk about dysbiosis, this general term that defines an imbalance in the gut microbiome, the most relevant way to describe dysbiosis is when somebody has a, um, an, over, uh, an overt presence of microbes that eat away at the mucin two layer versus microbes that rebuild it, right? In your commensal flora, that are, there are a whole host of microbes whose job it is to rebuild that mucin two layer constantly. Right, the mucin two layer is built from the bottom up like your skin. So within, within this intestinal epithelium, these green cells here are goblet cells. These goblet cells reproduce this mucin two layer constantly. So they're constantly producing it from the bottom up and it's pushing things out. The topmost layer of the mucin layer com- continuously flus- uh, you know, flushes away with, with, with defecation and you constantly rebuild kind of a new layer that by the time it gets up here, it gets digested enough where it becomes mucin one, but down here it's mucin two, right? So that's the role of goblet cells. However, the function of goblet cells are controlled by microbes. And and if if you don't have adequate microbes to upregulate goblet cell mucin production or turn on the epigenetics for mucin production or provide the building blocks for mucin production, you start to get an, an overt amount of microbes that eat away at the mucin two layer versus rebuilding it. That is the most profound dysbiosis you can experience because that leads to that eating away the mucin two layer, the translocation of the mucin one layer along with microbes to the intestinal epithelium, recruitment of immune cells, which then leads to profound leakiness in the gut. 
right? So now when you're, when you're relatively young or you're relatively healthy still, this section can be just a few inches of your intestinal epithelium. Mm -hmm. But as this section starts to, to, to look like this, it actually drives and promotes the adjacent sections to become like this, right? So you could have this as a two or three inch section of your whole GI tract, or this can be feet of your GI tract. And the significance of the extent of that damage is what determines how clinically relevant it is to you right now, right? So you could have that kind of damage going on, but if it's only affecting a small portion of your intestines, you don't feel it clinically. You could have significant leaky gut, but not feel it. But as that becomes more and more profound, as it affects larger and larger chunks of your gut lining, that's when you start to see the clinical relevance of it, where that the resulting inflammation from the leakiness of the gut drives other chronic conditions, right? So that mucosal layer is so important. Not only is it important as a barrier, as a physical barrier from keeping all of those microbes in the, in the commensal flora up there from moving in too close to the intestinal epithelium, it also acts as the conduit for the microbiome and the immune system to communicate. If that conduit is broken, the microbiome and the immune system stop communicating. That means your immune system has lost a key part of its training and functionality. Here's the other really crazy part about it is, is the gut mucosa is the central command center for how the rest of the mucosal tissues in your body will respond, right? Whether it's in your mouth, your mucosal tissue in your upper respiratory tract, your mucosal tissue underneath your skin, in your urogenital tract, in your sinuses and so on, all of those mucosal tissues respond to what's happening immunologically in your gut mucosa. So if your gut mucosa is dysfunctional and, have, and experiencing lots of inflammation, all these other mucosal tissues will be inflamed. All of these other mucosal tissues will overreact to things that you are exposed to, whether it's ragweed you're, built, you're, you're um, breathing in or something that touches your skin, or something that you swallow that you hold in your mouth, right? All of these things respond to the, the um, gut mucosal um, command center, if you will. So that's why paying attention to the mucosal layer is so important. Keep in mind that the mucosal layer is the largest surface area in your body. We used to think as a skin, of the skin as being the largest surface area in the body. The mucosal layer is is a couple hundred times larger than the skin, right? You've got almost 4,000 square feet of mucosa layer inside your body. So every square inch of the inside of your body is covered with the mucosa layer. Everything that enters your body, whether it's food or microbes or you know, airborne particles, and, and no matter where it's entering, whether it's entering through your ears, your eyes, your nose, your mouth, your skin, your urogenital tract, it enters into the mucosa first. The reason for that is the mucosa traps things and it allows the immune system to decide how to respond to it. And if you have an unhealthy mucosa in your gut, when your other mucosal tissue trap things and, and examine it, it's gonna to respond to everything with an inflammatory reaction. It makes right? total sense. It, it makes total sense. Okay, yeah. I've, got some com I've got some questions coming in hot here. Yeah. Um, so first of all, uh, lots of love to you. And Ursula is saying serene skin, which is one of your new probiotic formulations is working on my severe acne rosacea and eczema. I tried everything else and nothing has worked. I'm on his probiotic protocol for healing of the gut. Many blessings to go out to Karen. Thank you, Siobhan, for bringing all Thank of us. You. Thank you. That's fabulous news. I hear about that all the time. So and, and let's talk for a moment about the impact of serene skin on the mucosa. Right. Okay. And, and, and again, how that translates to the skin, because what's happening there is what we're doing is we're increasing the production of short chain fatty acids in the gut. Uh, one of the short chain fatty acids that we want to increase in particular, as it relates to the skin, is a short chain fatty acid called acetate. Acetate, once produced in the gut, actually reduces mucosal inflammation distal from the gut in areas like the skin on your face and other areas. And that acetate has a powerful impact on reducing inflammation in the sebaceous gland and areas 
underneath the 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 uh, the top layer of the skin, which thereby reduces inflammatory lesions and reduces the acne, and it reduces other inflammatory responses in the skin as well as she described. So that again is working through the gut microbiome, through the mucosa, and the ability of the gut microbiome to modulate immunological and inflammatory responses in other parts of the body. So um, that's awesome. It, it's a it's a foundational approach to it, right? We're not trying to um, shortcut the change in physiology. We're actually going after the, the root cause with that product. So it's it's super exciting to hear uh, the impact it's having. So, so uh, several people are asking, well, what can we do to heal our gut lining? So yeah. you know, that's kind of the, the point. We wanted to explain the problem, which is more extensive than I think most of us realize. Yep. And then what can we do to help fix it? Yeah. So I don't know. Have we talked about the total gut restoration kit on your, on your program? Um, we have periodically, I have it over there. I can go grab it. I can, um, I can grab it as well. I have it okay. right around yeah. the corner here. Um, okay. So because we realize in looking through all the research that this dismantling of the mucosa, which is a, a, a Dry, uh, consequence of dysbiosis, as I mentioned, right? You have this imbalance of microbes that eat away at the mucin layer constantly versus microbes that can rebuild it. That type of dysbiosis, which is the most common, and I would say probably the predominant, like 95% of people who experience dysbiosis likely experience this type of dysbiosis. Very few people actually experience a dysbiosis where you have a overt pathogen that's driving all of the conditions, right? Where you have one, maybe two pathogens that are so overgrown that they're creating significant dysfunction. It's typically a imbalance of basic function where it's normal to have microbes eating away at the mucin layer, right? That occurs. And that's supposed to happen as a mucin layer grows up because you want to eat away at the thicker part so it becomes more fluid and then more microbes can live in it. But again, you if you have the right microbes, it'll keep growing from the bottom up. So that's a normal function. However, if you get imbalance where there's more eating than rebuilding, it's when you let, end up in this. So that's why we built this system. It's called the total gut restoration, right? So that's how it's defined. And there are really three steps to it to, to completely address this problem, right? So there's the recondition, the reinforce, and then the rebuild, which is here. Um, let me talk about what each of these are, right? So reconditioning. As I talked about, the first thing that occurs when you end up with your mucosal lining damage is that the dysbiosis sets in. That's that imbalance between eating away and rebuilding. In order to fix this problem, we have to address that imbalance of microbes. So we have to recondition the microbiome. We have to bring back the balance and the, the prevalence of organisms that are, whose job it is, is to rebuild and maintain that lining of the gut, right? So you need a lot of short chain fatty acid producing organisms. You need a lot of organisms that can convert lactate into butyrate and propionate and acetate. You need increased levels of acromancia because acromancia, part of its key job is to rebuild the, uh, the mucosa layer by stimulating goblet cells. You need the butyrate because that's the primary fuel of the goblet cells. What's right? in the you're, box, Karen? You got to show us what's in the box. Oh, I will. Yes, it'll okay, be a okay. surprise uh, when we reveal it. Okay. Um, so that's the first step. That's called reconditioning, right? We need okay. to change the microbiome. We need to bring back the balance towards microbes that rebuild the mucosa versus microbes that eat away. The second step is reinforcing that change. And we have a product in there that reinforces this new microbiome, which is geared towards rebuilding the, 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 the mucosa. And then the last part is the rebuild part where we provide this new microbiome with the tools in order to be able to rebuild the mucosa. So here's what's in the box to be able to achieve those things. Hopefully I have all of them in there. Okay, yeah. yeah. So the first step, the reconditioned step, oops. I would be terrible at QVC, Siobhan. Uh, I, don't know, I don't know how to put it. a good it. word for you. Oh, it's all backwards uh, on the it camera. It's backwards what. and upside down. Yeah, okay. All right, so the first part of reconditioning is um, this. 
here it is, your it's megaspore. megaspore, right? So it, with the megaspore, not only have we shown through clinical research that we can seal up the leakiness in the gut, we also have shown through studies that we've published that megaspore dramatically increases the production of short chain fatty acids by increasing the growth of keystone species like Fecalum bacteria posnitsi and Acromantia mucinophila, right? So megaspore is suppressing the microbes that, that eat away at the mucin layer too much and increasing the growth of microbes that rebuild the mucin layer. In addition, the spores also produce short chain fatty acids themselves. So they have this keen capability of producing the, the key compounds like butyrate, propionate, and acetate themselves. So they start changing your microbiome. Now, the next step after, and this is what you do for the first 30 days, right? You, you start using the megaspore and you start reconditioning your microbiome. Then the next 30 days, you add in the prebiotic. The prebiotic is designed to feed keystone bacteria specifically and only keystone bacteria. So this is a unique set of oligosaccharides that um, have been clinically shown to feed Fecalum bacteroposnitsi, Acromantia, Rumnococcus, and all of these really important keystone bacteria who rebuild and maintain that mucosal and epithelial structures. So when you add in the megaspore with the, with the prebiotic, for example, in month two, what you end up getting is you end up getting a double or tripling of the positive effects of megaspore. And again, we've shown this in published studies, right? Then the last part is this megamucosa. The megamucosa, once you have this Redis this reconditioned microbiome, you need to provide the microbiome with the key components that it needs in order to rebuild the mucosal lining. So some of those key components are four critical amino acids. So there are four amino acids that are the building blocks of the mucosal layer, right? These are the L form of the amino acids. And if you don't have adequate amounts of that, those amino acids, coming in, you can't rebuild a mucosal layer. Studies have shown when you have adequate amounts of those amino acids, you increase mucin synthesis by 95%, right? Wow. So it's a major increase in, in the ability to rebuild the, uh, the mucosal layer. The worst thing would be you recondition your microbiome, you change it, you bring on and grow the microbes that rebuild the mucosal layer, and you don't give them the building blocks, right? So then they're trying to build it, but they can't because they don't have the building blocks for it. The second component in here are polyphenols. As it turns out, polyphenols are incredibly important for acromantia, which is a key organism that rebuilds the gut microbiome or the, the, the mucosal lining, right? And then the last component in here is IgG, the immunoglobulin, the bovine immunoglobulin. One of the things that negates the rebuilding of the mucosa is constant inflammation in the gut. Right? If the gut is experiencing chronic inflammation, it cannot repair the mucosal lining as efficiently. It's no different than like if you get a cut on your hand, it takes the cut longer to heal if you keep rubbing that cut every single day. Right, The more you irritate it, the longer it takes to heal. And so if you can bring down some of that inflammatory response in the lining of the gut, you can heal it faster and you can rebuild it faster. You can rebuild those structures faster. And so the IgG, the immunoglobulins in this product have been shown in a number of conditions that are associated with really severe leaky gut. It's been shown that it can assist in reducing the inflammation so the gut heals faster, right? So that's the three-step process. Basically, this is a... Um, Oh, forgive me here. 90 day supply of the Megaspore, um, right? So this is, you take this every day for the 90 days. And then this is a 60 day supply of the Mega Pre. So you start this on month two and you take it in month three and it's a 30 day supply of the Mega Mucosa, which you start in the third month along with the other two. Which right? by so, the way is now available in capsules. Exactly, that's excellent. We, that's huge. We do have a coupon for you, no bloat 15, and we will, I think Clarissa had to step away for a second, and um, we will put it in the chat. Yep. Okay, so hang in there with me. Let me get you the link, and the and the coupon code is no bloat 15. There, thanks, Clarissa. You're the best. Uh, it's just not letting me message you, Clarissa, anymore. So 
Um, that is the way to get this 15% off, which is exclusive to us here. And thanks for being here. And thank you, Karen, for doing that. And we have it for a couple of days. So just FYI. We originally have a coupon that if you're a new customer to Megaspore and Microbiome Labs, that gives you 15% off because Kieran's so good to us. However, when Kieran comes on, we often get a special coupon just for a couple of days after his time with us. And that's what this is, even if you've ordered before. Yeah. A couple of questions coming your way, dear. Um, even if you don't have symptoms who think their gut is okay, is it a good idea to do total gut restoration? Yeah, and that's the thing, right? So we in our in our original studies when we were uh, when we were doing the leaky gut study. So if my table is moving for no reason, um, the <laughs> the standard desk something hits the button. Uh, when we were doing our original studies, what surprised us the most is that you know we we recruited what we call healthy normal individuals by the FDA standard. So these are individuals with no symptoms, no chronic conditions, aren't on any medications, healthy body weight, typically young, 22, 23 years old, and 55% of them had very severe leaky gut. Wow. And to the point where they had really massive amounts of inflammation that you could measure, um, but they didn't feel anything. It was still subclinical, right? Um, that was surprising to us. We didn't think it would be that high among what we'd call healthy, normal individuals. Wow. Um, but if, if you know, you're in your 30s, 40s and beyond, even if you don't have any frank GI symptoms or, or symptoms you would associate with your gut, if you have things like anxiety or stress, if you have things like I don't sleep as well as I probably should, right? If you have any sort of metabolic issues like oh, it's so hard for me to lose that last 15 pounds or, or maintain a healthy weight. You know, if you have any sort of skin irritation conditions, all of these things are driven by chronic low-grade inflammation, which comes from leakiness in the gut, right? So there's lots and lots of things that are not gut-specific that are driven by this same dysfunction in the gut. And I mentioned that the, the talk I do, the two hour talk I do, I go through all kinds of conditions that are seemingly unrelated, like reflux and diabetes, right? You would never think your reflux and diabetes is related, but it's absolutely driven by the same thing. There's lots of studies to show this. So I would say that if you live in the Western world, uh, inevitably, your gut is going to be leaky. And if your gut is leaky, and you don't have any profound symptoms yet, it just means it's not there yet. It's mm -hmm. coming, right? Because as I mentioned, you can have just portions of the gut leaky, and eventually it'll, it'll spread. Um, or you have uh, significant parts of the gut leaky, and you already feel it. Right. So absolutely. I think to me, total gut restoration is foundational for people. Uh, it should be, you know, most people should to do it a couple of times a year, maybe even That's depending, beautiful. right? Imagine yeah. depending on how severe your conditions you're dealing with. Some people have had to do the 90 day and then they, they make significant progress. Uh, and then they may have to do all three products for another 30 days to really kick the progress to where they want it to be. And maybe another 30 days. Some people at the end of 90 days, they're great. And then they just stay maintenance on the megaspore. Um, you know, so it, it's, you know, your individual results will change, but it really depends on how severe the leakiness in your gut is. So this is what I suggest is that you try it and see how it goes for you. And tr so let's talk about it. I, I, and by the way, if you go to, um, to Microbiome Labs website, they do have the instructions there. Plus when you get the box, it has the instructions as well. And you can get it in the capsules now, which is so cool. And Susan, the direct to, pa direct -to patient code um, Clarissa just put it up in the chat. So keep scrolling up. It's up there. Um, what do we say to somebody who is sensitive, who has never done this before? Um, how can we start slow? What is your best suggest for starting slow, Kieran? Yeah. So, so of all three products in, in the, in the kit, the product that could cause you, if you're really sensitive, you're very new to probiotics or, or things that are profoundly impactful on your gut, the, the product that can that can cause some discomfort will be the, the probiotic, the megaspore, right? So on that step, and that's step one, on that step, you actually can go slower. Um, we've had some highly sensitive people go as little as an eighth of a cap 
every day. So you basically you open it. our capsule. Yeah. Yep. Take a pinch of the of the powder and mix it into any sort of food or drink and take it that way. You can save the rest of the powder in a little bowl uh, or for the very next day. But you can do that and you can go extremely slow to reduce the 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 you know die off or Herxheimer like reaction. We find that it's about eight to ten percent of people that experience some degree of that. Most of them are relatively mild. It's just kind of cramping, bloating in the gut, you know, maybe some loose stool. For some people, they may feel fatigued or they may feel, you know, anxious to some degree, you know, and, and that's it's that's rarer, but these are all kind of part part of the whole you know umbrella of potential die-offs and uh, symptoms. Now, here's another thing. If for some reason, even when you go to an eighth of a cap or half a cap or whatever small dose you're doing, if it's if, if it's too much for you, one of the things you can do is actually take the mega mucosa along with the first step of megaspore because the IgG in there can be really good at dampening some of these Herxheimer reactions. Now, if you if that or if you don't want to do that, you can actually do the straight IgG, which is something we have as well as a high dose IgG. Um, right. You know, in our clinic in Chicago, that's what we started doing with the eight or ten percent of people that tend to, to have a sensitivity response where they're like, "Oh, I'm getting a die off response, and and it's you know it, it's harder for me to work my way up to the normal dose." We give them the IgG with the uh, with this with the spore dosing. Um, okay. So that's something people can consider as well. Okay. And so go slow. And I'm going to ask a couple of other questions here. I wanted to, uh, what about the histamine intolerance? How is mega pre safe? Is it safe for people with histamine intolerance? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's no, there's no histamine in the product. Uh, they're not, they don't induce the growth of histamine okay. inducing microbes. So there's no reason to think that they would have any issue with people with histamine intolerance. When you're taking this throughout the day, what about taking it with food, not with food? <laughs> Talk to us about that. Yeah, so the probiotics, you wanna always take it with food, right? And it doesn't matter which meal of the day, you can take it with whatever meal you choose, you take it just prior to eating. Um, the, the same thing with the prebiotic and probiotic. So if you're doing the capsules and you're taking the, cap, the, the capsule version, you can take it at any time of day that is convenient to you. It's, it doesn't necessarily have to be with or without food. It's always easier to think of it with food, I, th I think. Or if your routine is you wake up in the morning and take a lot of your supplements, you can do that too, right? It's not really gonna make a major impact either way, whether you're taking it with or without food. If you're doing the powder versions, which I still do the powder versions, you you can, and you're at the point where you're doing both the prebiotic powder and the mega mucosa powder, you can actually mix the two powders together in a single shaker cup, shake it up and you can sip it throughout the day. Or that can be your drink with the meal that you're, you're having, right? So you don't have to be scientific or formulaic about it. It's yeah, not, I don't think it actually it's is. about taking it in. And, and we do that on purpose, for example, in our clinical trials, we don't specify to the patients when exactly to take it, which meal, with the meal, without a meal, we provide vague recommendations for the, the specific reasons that we want a, a diversity in how people end up taking it, right? Because then if if people take it kind of however they want and whatever time of day they want, and we still get overall results, then we know that, okay, it's safe to take it during the day, middle of the day, it doesn't really matter. So um, make it convenient for yourself is the most important thing. Right, compliance. Yeah. Uh, and don't forget to habit stack. So while you're you know brushing your teeth, do your supplements, because I am obsessed with compliance and trying to make it easier because it's tough. Um, question for you about Canada. If people uh, need it in Canada, what's the best way to get it? Um, so through Siobhan's uh, code, you can order through our direct to patient. Uh, you can order up to 90 day supply at any time, as much as you want. There's no restrictions. So we have a direct to patient program and you have to put a practitioner code in there. And of course, uh, through our special fondness and relationship with SIBO SOS and Siobhan, she's, uh, she has a special code. So you just add that code in there. You'll be able to order directly. Uh, it's called direct to patient. Okay. So I guess someone is wondering, do you have free shipping to Canada? Or do you have free uh, shipping in the U.S. even? 
Yeah, I, you know, I don't know. I don't know what the promos are that we're running. We we choose okay. to charge sometimes. for shipping. Yeah, but sometimes we do run a promo for free shipping. So take advantage of the 15% off that you get through going through our code. I appreciate that. Um, we do have a video with Karen on Polyguard for H. pylori. Um, so you can watch that. Um, by the way, when we send you the replay, we send you to this page that we have at SIBOSOS.com and it's like Karen's courses. So it's free and you can see all of the topics that Karen has covered with us over these wonderful sessions. And so like you can see something on, you know, H. pylori or whatever skin we've done, we've done a whole bunch of topics. So they are floating around on that page. So when you get the replay, you can click on that and it will take you there. Um, what about someone with candida or mold? Yeah. Um, so in that first step, if you have candida or mold, in the first step with Megaspore, we would also add in the Mega Microbalance. Okay. Um, so you do megaspore, mega microbalance, and if you have candida or mold, it's probably a good idea to add in the mega IgG as well. So you okay. do all three of those for the first 30 days before going on to adding in the mega pre, right? Because you do have to address that, that candida overgrowth and, and the resulting mold toxins and things like that that are produced. Um, the mega microbalance and the IgG will really help do that. The mega spore will compete against the mole and then also ensure that in the areas where the candida, for example, has been, has been um, reduced, that good microbes take over that real estate. Does taking mega spore is a sure shot that leaky gut is decreased? First of all, nothing's a sure shot. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I mean, the response rate in the clinical trial is very, very high. Uh, yeah. The average reduction among all participants was 60% in 30 days. Um, so it's quite significant, right? Um, right. You know, but we, we're not going to, we, you know, we can't say with any degree of um, integrity that, oh, it's 100% sure that it's going to re reduce your leaky gut. What I can tell you is that among research products or any products, it's the it's the only one of the only probiotics, if not the only probiotic, that has any clinical studies showing a reduction in leaky gut. Um, lots of other stuff is based on kind of borrowed science and assumptions. We've actually studied it, studied it, published it, shown that it does reduce leaky gut. All right, very cool. Um, Christina saying hi, Karen. Megaspore changed the life of my husband and me. Megaspore helped to treat our dysbiosis, our IBS, our eczema, Lyme, and EBV symptoms. Of my husband's, he's decreased. We are so happy. I wanted to ask you to do a study if spores can help for UTI, especially putting spores in the vaginal canal. I have a specific problem. My bone structure is not good. Some bones and joints are squeezed. Blood and lymph not flowing normally because of, you have the frequent infections. Thanks so much. Wow. That's oh, that's that's awesome. Good Thank news, you for sharing. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, you know, with the bones, for example, for one, make sure you're getting enough vitamin K27. Um, and, and we're coming out next month with a high dose K2 D3 product, uh, which will be available through through Siobhan. Um, that's a critical product for your bone structure. Um, you know, the, the, there's nothing more important for bones than vitamin K2. Um, and then on the UTI side. So, we don't, we can't openly promote this because we're selling it as a food supplement, uh, but we have lots of docs that have used it in a suppository like manner in the vaginal canal to help with people that have chronic dysfunction in the vaginal canal, right? So um, one way of doing it, it's, it could be as simple as, uh, and actually we, I, I had a couple of naturopaths trying this to, to report back to me, um, they would actually just insert a capsule uh, in the vaginal canal uh, before bed. And then the capsule actually dissolves in, uh, in the vaginal canal. Um, but that depends on the acidity there, right? So if your vaginal canal is very basic, um, meaning it's, it's not as healthy as it should be, then it may not dissolve. So one of the other options is mixing it into a you know, safe lubricant or cream, uh, the powder itself, and then inserting it that way. Um, now, taking it orally also has a very positive impact on um, your vaginal canal and, and, and the ability to deal with things like, you know, E. coli in your urinary tract, right? So you combine that with taking like cranberry extracts and all that, it could significantly help. Um, the other thing is it depends on how old you are too, what your estrogen mm -hmm. levels are, because that estrogen level leads to helping to maintain the balance in the vaginal microbiome. Mm -hmm. um, 
And then can you buy Microbiome uh, Labs products on Amazon? You can, but they are not an authorized dealership. So mm -hmm. that makes me nervous. And then also can't get the 15% off, um, okay. which we really appreciate. We are affiliates and it doesn't change your price, but it helps fund our work, full disclosure. And not that you didn't think that already, but um, the other thing about the vaginal microbiome is Kieran has a new test at uh, Microbiome Labs. They have a stool test um, called Biome FX, and they also have a vaginal microbiome test. So I paid for mine. I went and got my vaginal microbiome test. Like, let's all get real here. I was fascinated by that because I, you know, I was wondering about a couple of things and I did it. And then I took it to my gynecologist and I was like, Okay, like here. And she was like, okay, like I don't know who these people are. So I'm going to test you. And sure enough, her test came out just like the test I got from Microbiome Labs. I was like, I told you. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, and so we were able to do a few things and I'm feeling great. So not to share TMI, but on the other hand, like I'm a grown up and you are too. So mm -hmm. there. And if you are having issues, that is one of like, like you wonder why I do some, it's on dental issues. Cause it's so uncomfortable that foot pain and vaginal issues. <laughs> no way. Life is totally. too short. Yeah. So, um, so there are a lot of things you can do, but balancing the microbiome through taking it internally is a, gr I would start there because mm -hmm. that is a very sensitive environment. So mm -hmm. that's just my personal approach to that. Yeah. And take the test. You know, yes. if, you, if you have questions, if you're wondering if your system is working the way it should test it, uh, it'll give you some insights. Uh, it's a very simple at home test you do by yourself. Uh, within a couple of weeks, you'll get the results and, you know, you don't need to guess anymore at that point. Right. So uh, you'll, you'll have some definitive answers. It was, it was great because I just, I felt really empowered, which is why you do these tests. So in New York, can you get the test? Haley, um, I don't think you can get the test in New York. You gotta keep, you gotta keep bugging your Congress people about that. I'm not sure what the problem is in New York. Um, let's see, gluten, dairy, and sugar-free. I mean, it's always a good idea, Sheila, to take good care of your diet. It's not like Karen is saying, you have to be those things in order to get benefit because you don't but that's always a good idea. Um, yeah, in, in, in our studies, and keep in mind, I, I always encourage people to, of course, eat clean and eat right, right? You don't need the additional stress on your system as you're trying to heal. But, um, you know, just from a disclosure standpoint, when we do our studies, we don't control for diet. So these people are eating whatever they want and mostly eating bad things, uh, especially in our leaky gut studies, because a lot of the studies are done on college students, so they're not doing anything good for themselves, right, in the, in the period when they're going through the study, and yet we see these profound results. Um, so it does speak to the efficacy of the products themselves, but certainly the efficacy of the products will be helped by cleaning up some of the lifestyle component as well. Right. So let's not slice hairs here. Hey, Glenn, how you doing? Do you class dairy is not eating clean? Some people have no problem eating dairy. And like, mm -hmm. this is not about dairy or not dairy. It's how is your body responding to it? Mm -hmm. But I will tell you this, that the stronger your microbiome is and the stronger your gut lining is, like this is the rabbit hole I wanted to go down was the gut lining. That is how specific, yeah. but you see how important it is now that we've been listening to Karen. And by the way, we only have five minutes left with him because he has got to go get on that plane. Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted to just cover a couple more things. When you go to Microbiome Labs, you can order the tests for both stool and the vaginal microbiome. I highly recommend both of them. Um, the science behind those, I know you work with one of the best labs in the world for that. Mm -hmm. Do you want to touch on that? Yeah, we work with uh, Cosmos ID because the whole point of microbiome testing in order to make it useful in any way is you have to be able to map out the microbiome very accurately, right? So you know exactly what's, which species are there and not only which are there, but in what context, what is the relative abundance of the different organisms to one another. That's the key thing that helps. So um, the, the, the company that's by far the pioneer on that, and it's all based on the work and the, and the founder, Rita Caldwell, um, she's, she's one of the most decorated scientists we have in the US. You know, she has 
Uh, I think she has 18 honorary degrees in, in, in addition to her a couple PhDs. Um, she's published over 800 papers on this topic of microbial ecosystems and all that. There's nobody that's more knowledgeable and decorated uh, on that topic. And so we wanted to work with the best on that so that we could bring you the most accurate uh, and most useful data because we see too much of, of the other microbiome tests and it's just you know nonsense technology, it's old school stuff. They're not giving you proper mapping. They're not giving you context. You're not really getting any useful information. Um, and, and that's the worst, you know, wasting your hard earned dollars on a test that Good doesn't science. tell you anything. Yeah, exactly. It's just, um, so, so that's, we, you know, it took us several years to develop the tests, uh, working with the best of the best in that field. And, you know, we use it in clinical research. We're very proud of it. And we think it's, it's a, an amazing insight into what's going on in your body. Okay. Um, pregnant. If you are pregnant, can you do total gut restoration? Absolutely. There's no reason not to. And in fact, you know, when you're pregnant, that's one of the most important times you want to have a healthy gut. Uh, and leakiness in the gut can be profoundly impactful on pregnancy. Um, so you want to make sure you have a healthy, diverse microbiome. You don't have leakiness in the gut. You want that mucosal lining to be, you know, uh, fixed and firm and exactly how it's supposed to be. So your, your system functions the way it should. Okay. Thank you so much, Karen. I'm going to let you go so you can get on that flight, man. I don't want My to pleasure. Thank you, everybody. Back. Thank uh, you, Karen. We'll talk to you soon. You. Safe travels. Bye-bye. Love you. Thanks so much, everyone. So um, I thank you so much for being here. I did want to answer a couple of questions that have to do with SIBO. Um, this is, so I'm going to repeat for you what Dr. Allison Seebecker, world-renowned SIBO specialist, says about doing probiotics. And it's not, uh, she you know, almost like hates answering this question because it's not like what everyone wants to hear, but it is an experiment. This is your own, what I call a snowflake microbiome. Everyone's is different. Although I think they found that the some snowflakes are the same, whatever, you know what I'm talking about, what I'm saying. So one thing that she suggests is sure, if you're feeling the call to do some probiotics, do it before and during a treatment. But if you have great results with that treatment, don't necessarily, don't start a probiotic after a good treatment. So that's, that's what she usually says is like, Hey, if we have you in great shape, you've done a treatment and you've reduced your load of bacteria and, and, um, methanogen overgrowth, don't start a probiotic then. So that's her, her suggestion, but if you want to try it before, see how you're doing, you get enough of a result, maybe keep going. If you want to try your typical treatments for SIBO and EMO then you can do that and you can do it during, but, and you can even do it after, right? Like if it's been working for you the whole time, then continue after. But if you have done a treatment, don't introduce the probiotic after that, if the treatment was successful. That's the answer for that. Um, ooh, got to touch up those roots. Okay, man, I'm just letting it all hang out today. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. Um, the So the microbiome, uh, hey, Glenn, go to the links that um, Floris has been posting because at Microbiome Labs is where you can get your Megaspore and the total restoration kit, gut restoration kit. That's also where the test kits are for your stool test as well as your, not yours, Glenn, but the vaginal microbiome test. So um, it's super easy. You get a box sent to your house. You do the test, you send it back, you get a notification in your account that they have received the test, they do the testing, and then you get your results. So I'm not going to get your results, you're going to get your results. And it, it, it is very straightforward. I'd never ordered a test um, through that direct way before, and so I was really excited to try it myself, and it was very, very straightforward. Okay. Um, Oh, good, Kim. Thanks for being an herbalist. We need a lot of help there and getting people uh, supported with herbs. Um, okay. Susie, you've done a stool test and it was reviewed by a doctor with Microbiome Labs. That's so cool. She did not mention taking Mycobalance. This is a new product. Just wondering if why it was recommended since I do have mold. Just wondering why it was recommended since I do have mold. Maybe by what she saw, she didn't think you needed it. Or maybe she was just giving you the bare minimum. 
Um, one thing about your mold tests is, did you also get an oats test to see the urine test to see if there were, it's a mycotoxin test, sorry. It's a mycotoxins test um, uh, by the same company that does the oats test. And just to see who, how um, those metabolites were doing for you. That is a great test. I really like it. And we actually have a discount for you. If you want to get that test done, it is the mycotoxin test. And Clarissa has, she's ahead of me. God bless you, Clarissa, for reading my mind. Man, you know me well. Um, it's Rupa Labs. And um, they, Dr. C. Becker has a dispensary there. And you can get a hold of some tests there, including um, your mycotoxin and your oats test. And they are not retail priced. They are below retail there. Consultation is not included. Interpretation is not included. So just to be super clear about that, it's just a way for you to get access to some functional testing. And like, I like it because then I can compare it to other tests that I've done. And also what I really like about it is when you do get an appointment with a functional practitioner and you walk in or even pre-submit your test results prior to that first visit, whew, that speeds things up in my world. Like I have done that before where I went to the functional practitioner, we decided I needed a test, then I got the test, then I waited, you know, four weeks for the results. And then I either had a doctor's appointment with that functional practitioner, but didn't get the results in time, or I, I was just, just waited. It was just too long for me personally at that time. So I love walking into functional practitioners with tests in hand or better yet get into their portal before that appointment, the results are there and you can talk about it on that first appointment. Just a suggestion. Um, Kim Hudson, not all doctors are naive. Some are, some aren't. I am absolutely an appreciation of people who continue their ongoing commitment to learning and support um, them, themselves as well as their practice through ongoing learning, which is why I so often uh, do these things to help people with their ongoing learning. Um, I don't know the answer. If you have an ileostomy, I don't know. Um, and that is a very, very good question. I would ask your gastro about how they feel about you doing a probiotic. Um, so, all right, I'm just going to see if there's anything else I can answer and then we can wrap up. I wanted to definitely say thank you. How do you find a, do a functional medicine doctor? Well, so there are a lot of approaches. It depends for me. My suggestion is to really evaluate what you're looking for. Do you want someone to go in and do a baseline and to see uh, if there are any warning signs of, you know, are you pretty well, but you just want someone to do a baseline and evaluate you? Then there are many functional practitioners who could probably do that. Do you have a gastro or a hormonal issue? Then I want to find someone who specializes in that. So uh, the at SIBO SOS, in the Facebook group, and, and by the way, hi everyone on Facebook, in the community, there is a section in the files that has a list of our speakers who we have certainly vetted in terms of their knowledge and everybody's experiences are different, but we do have a list of our speakers. Um, there are some SIBO specialists on there. And there are also um, ways where you, you just go into the, that Facebook group and type in, if especially for digestion, like who, where you live and who you're looking, what you're looking for. However, I also want to say, regardless of where you live, telemedicine is a miracle, <laughs> and getting that telemedicine appointment is with the right person can save you thousands of dollars, so much time and so much energy. So one hour with a specialist for your problem can save you years, months, at least, you know, time, energy, money, stress. So really trying to find the right person. Um, Daniel, Danielle, I don't know why your doctor doesn't go by your breath test numbers for SIBO. Who can read them? That doctor should be able to read them. So I don't know what's happening there. Um, yeah, you have to go and educate it. I'm not saying go in blind at all. I'm saying that's what SOS stands for. So my company, SIBO SOS, part of Chronic Condition Rescue, because I had so many things wrong with me. So, uh, and I'm doing so well now, thank God. And I learned right along with you, right? So when you go in, it used to be for me, save 
you know, someone save me, SOS, save our ship. Now it's save ourselves. So you do need to be your own patient advocate. There is a lot of tension right now in the universe because it's September. We were talking about this at the very beginning. And I think a lot of people are feeling a lot of pressure. We're like, oh my gosh, I'm still not well. It's getting towards the end of the year. Before you know it, it's going to be the holidays. Are you starting to feel the like the funny feeling of like Thanksgiving and Christmas on the back of your shoulders if you're like stressed by family dynamics? Ugh. Literally, my family has started to, and I love my family, and we have great holidays, so I'm very lucky, but I know not everyone does. And like, we've already started making those plans. And I was like, wow, this is happening. This is real. This is like really September already. So take a breath. Let's do it together. I'll drop my shoulders. You can drop yours. Just let's chill for a second. There is hope, there are answers, and it is overwhelming. And no one knows that more than I do. So hang in there. That is why I started this work. Please just take a breath. I know it can be a lot. So just grab 15 minutes to chill, reassess, regroup, and know that if it doesn't happen by December 31st, it's okay, because that is a great benchmark of time. And maybe ask yourself what it is that you need to be doing differently so you can carve out the time to take better care of yourself. Seriously, take good, taking care, good, good care of you teaches other people how to treat you by how you're treating yourself. And it is one of the most difficult things for some people to do. And what I've also found recently is that great, great, wonderful, amazing people who need to take care of themselves I'll say can get trapped in trying to help other people. It's such a like sticky wicket, isn't it? It's like, well, but I'm helping. Oh, and I have such good intentions. Yeah, that is very, very true. But if you don't put the oxygen mask on you when the plane is going down, you cannot put the oxygen mask on them. You will be no good to them. So please take good care of you. Okay, that is my, that is my, um, soapbox discussion for the day and um right oh retail is detail my gosh if you have a store that was my one prenup with my husband he and I had a little kiosk at the mall when I had my yoga studio and this was back in the 90s and um it was fine and then life happened and years went by and we reconnected and uh, ended up being married, never married for 18 years. But the one thing that we both shook on, so to speak, before we got married is that we would never have a retail store because it is so hard. <laughs> it was such a marriage tester. We would never have a restaurant either. Anyway, um, so my heart goes out to you. Smart, right? Um, how long is the discount good for? I, I think it is good for, I'm looking at my book. I think it's through this week, and I think it's through the beginning, maybe, I'm going to say maybe September 4th, um, September 4th, I think, Al. Okay, what else can I help you with? Hang in there, folks. Yep, Glenn has been with us. Um, yep, great, thanks. Yep, I, I really appreciate you all being here. Oh, sorry, September 2nd. This is the, and then Kim is asking for the Rupa link. So go to the Rupa page, Kim, and you can see um, the tests that were hand selected by um, by the ones that we really felt were important. So they are they are again less than retail. Sometimes you can get them directly from a practitioner who just charges you exactly what they are charged. Um, this is sort of in between. Rupa does have a seven percent surcharge. Just full disclosure. So check out the prices. See if it works for you. And if it does, great. And if it doesn't, that's great too. But we wanted to provide that option for you. Um, in our experience, it is less than what we have been getting charged when we as patients were trying to get some tests. So um, Danielle, about your doctor who doesn't believe in the numbers, I would just say, are they treating you well? Are they doing an appropriate treatment plan for you? And if not, then I would look for another doctor. I know that's not what people want to hear, but if you have someone who's discrediting what the data that you're bringing to them and isn't treating you properly, it's time for a new doctor. This is all part of you taking your power and being your own patient advocate. 
And Sophie, I would just reach out. I don't know if you're still here, Sophie, but I would just reach out to uh, Microbiome Labs and ask them that one question that you have. Um, is this program for inflammation from nervous system, vagus, fatty liver, and weight gain, Kim? I mean, it's going to help your microbiome. That is what it's going to do. And your microbiome is not just the command center for immune, the immune system, it's command center for everything. So I don't think there's a downside for getting your microbiome in shape. And Danielle, that is not Daniel, sorry, I'm sorry, so sorry for saying your name wrong, Daniel. Um, that is not the proper validated treatment for SIBO and EMO. And I think you've been in the Facebook group, group and posted this, and I think I replied there. Um, so I'm going to suggest that you find another doctor who does have the validated information, and you can find some of those in our speakers um, series document. And you can also email us at info at SIBOSOS.com and we can get it to you. Um, okay. Yep. 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 I hope that helps. And um, let's see what else is, what else is on the agenda? Yeah. All right. Susie, thanks for so much for addressing that for me. I've had oat and just did the mycotoxin test again that morning, this morning, actually. Okay, good. I will look into the testing site that you recommend again. Thank you. I appreciate the work you're doing. You've helped me so much. I'm so glad. I'm so very, very glad. Um, so the mycotoxin test at Rupa doesn't require a coupon. It is our dedicated page and the prices that are listed there are the prices. There is a 7% charge um, to when you check out, you'll see that. So that goes not to us, but straight to Rupa, uh, which I really, really like. And I was a little bit, what's the word? Um, I don't know what the word is, a little cynical. Like I had never heard of Rupa Health. And now like so many of the naturopaths that I know use Rupa for testing. And I was like a jerk. And I was like, well, I've never heard of them. What does that mean? I don't know. Are they new? I was asking them all these questions like, how long? Business, like all these baseline questions and they're like uh we 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 we're we're here we have like you know thousands of labs that they work with and tens of thousands of patients so i think it was just like behind the scenes that i knew people who knew them but i didn't know them so i was very glad to meet them i really like them i love their commitment and um, their energy and their focus so i've met with them multiple times and um really have, I was really, really glad to find them. You know, it's not for everybody, but if it works for you in a certain situation, then that would be great. I remember. So we just wrapped up the, uh, the first steps in treating SIBO masterclass summit, which was so phenomenal. We added a few new things. It was so good. It was free for days. A lot of people decided to put that in their library. I'm glad you did because you got some really good stuff, including, this is like one of the best deals we ever did, the masterclass on bile with Dr. Mona Morstein and on biofilms with Dr. Alana Gurvich. That was a cool, cool double whammy of masterclasses. And the, the Q&A for that, and we'll send an email out at for you if you didn't sign up for the, that and you um, haven't. It's a really great combo class, um, two separate master classes. And Mona, Dr. Morstein is joining us this Thursday, 12 to one for the watch party. So you can watch the video on your own or you can watch with me and the rest of the people that are joining us right there at the 12 to one. And then Dr. Morstein is coming in at two Am I saying that right? No, she's coming in at one Eastern time to three. So 12 starts the watch party and then one to three is the Q&A. So she'll be answering questions about the class and about bile and its impact on SIBO and your gut. So interesting. Oh my gosh. I, I remember just being blown away by that. That is happening this Thursday, 12 o'clock Eastern time for the watch party. An hour later, Dr. Morstein joins us live. And then Dr. Gervich, who did a phenomenal job on a masterclass on biofilms and biofilm disruptors. And if you have a tough case of SIBO, 
that nothing seems to respond to, I would definitely make sure you're checking this out. That is the 21st, three to 4.30 is the watch class, watch um, party. And then 4.30 to 6.30 is the Q and A. That's all Eastern time because I have time zone dys dyslexia. So don't ever ask me to tell you a time zone in anything that Eastern because I will mess it up. Okay, thank you, Clarissa. Thank you everyone for being here. I really appreciate you. If you have a tough case of anything gut related, I would definitely suggest coming to this biofilms and bio masterclasses. When I, we, we did them when, earlier in the year or late last year. And I was, I'm blown away a lot by these incredible doctors, but I was quadruple blown away by this information. I was like, oh my gosh, I want everyone to know this. So I decided to rerun it. And also I decided to give it away when you purchase the Masterclass Summit, because that's usually $77. And the Masterclass Summit during launch was 99. So I was like, that was phenomenal. Um, and yes, you will get a replay of this. And I hope to see you at those masterclasses. And yes, you will get a replay. So I think that's it. Give us a little bit to get the replay out. We always try to get it out that night. Sometimes we're understaffed and people have kids and lives and stuff. So we get them out the next day. But that is the plan at this point. And I hope you will try the Total Gut Restore. I hope you will try your Megaspore. If you bloat from it, you probably have taken too much. Very, very slowly. Open the capsule little like eighth of a teaspoon, put it in your food and slowly build up. I think sometimes we think, oh, it's just an over the counter. It must not be that strong. It could be very, very strong and other people take it and they have like no problem. It totally depends on your microbiome, but it does make a difference. And I'm really grateful to Karen for giving us that discount because he does not have to <laughs> at all. And he's been so consistent with it. And so I'm really, really, um, I feel very honored about that. Um, if you're a previous purchaser of the Masterclass of Mona's class and now is it included Iggy, um, that wasn't our plan, but if you write us at info at SIBOSOS.com, there you go, Clarissa's on it. Um, I'm sure we can make some arrangements for you because we appreciate you. And with that, I'm gonna wrap it up. Okay, take care everyone. We'll see you next time. Thank you so much. Stop recording. Ooh, sorry I didn't put on the live transcripts for the terrible closed captioning that happens. Anybody can always feel free to remind me about that. And if you didn't, I missed it, I'm sorry. Um, but apparently the closed captioning on Zoom is like comical, but does help a little bit. I don't know. They don't know how to spell my name, that's for sure, but that doesn't matter. It's all about, all about you and getting the most information as easily as possible. Okay, talk later, thank you. <laughs>